Hello makers. Welcome back to Making with Miss Dobras. And today we're going to build a Sierpinski's Pyramid. And this is my friend Sunny here. Sunny is getting bigger, isn't she? She's 10 weeks old. She's almost 12 weeks old. And she was with us when you first started the tetrahedron project. But this is what you can do if you build 16 tetrahedrons. Uh, you can make a Sierpinski's Pyramid. And this is what we're going to do today. And we're so we're also going to learn how to draw Sierpinski's Triangle which is the mathematical pattern that this pyramid is based on. So, um, Sunny is in a sleepy mood today. Probably best, otherwise she would, she would destroy this pyramid. Um, so let's get started, all right? This is part two of the tetrahedron project. And if you remember, a tetrahedron is one of these 3D triangles. Um, and you can make up these pyramids with them. And we are going to learn how to make a Sierpinski's Pyramid today by adding these together. To make a Sierpinski's Pyramid, you need to fold a lot of tetrahedrons. In particular, it's in to the power of four. So this is four. This is four. Each one of these little pyramids is four tetrahedrons. And you need 16 in total. Four times four is 16. All right. So the first stage is when you just fold one. So just this pink one on top, that's stage one. And then... Stage two is when you have four tetrahedrons put together. And as you can see, there's a repeating pattern. It's a triangle, big triangle shape um, made up of three triangles. All right, so I'm going to take three of these and glue them together so that we can start to build our Sapinski's Pyramid. Now, what I do, it can be kind of hard to do this because you have to glue them all together and it takes a while. I use a hot glue gun, but you could probably use Elmer's glue too. Before we do that, I wanted to introduce the idea of Sierpinski's triangle. This is a drawing of Sierpinski's triangle. Now, this is a pattern that is made of fractals. The simplest way to explain fractals is it's a repeating shape that makes up a pattern. And in this case, you know, there's a triangle, a larger one, and it's made up of all different smaller triangles. So the bigger triangle is made up of three smaller ones. These are all equilateral triangles, which means that each side of the triangle is equal. And then inside the smaller ones, there's another smaller one, and it just keeps getting smaller and smaller. And this pattern will repeat to infinity. Um, so it's a really cool mathematical pattern. And I drew this, and I'm going to show you how to draw it. I'm going to show you how to draw this just using a ruler and a pencil and a marker. And I'm also going to show you an easier way. Um, you can do a really nice version like this, but you can also do a really quick version to get you started. So we're going to do both. So one is one way with a ruler. And it takes a little more time. You have to measure it out. But it will turn out like this. And another way is just freehand. Um, so I'm going to start with the freehand way because it's really easy to do and it's pretty fun. And I think you'll like it. Okay, so I'm going to put the ruler down and I'll show you that way later. drew this one really quick and easy. Obviously it's a little messier than this one, right? Because I didn't use a ruler and I didn't measure it out. I just, uh, I just kind of eyeballed it, which is totally fine. So one thing I want you to, um, if you are going to draw it like this, each side of the triangle should be equal. So you have to try to make it as equal as you can. And then you have to find the halfway spot on the line. And everywhere I came, I found the halfway spot. And I put a dot there and the halfway spot right there. And then I connected this one. And then you just go and find the halfway spot. And then I think it's really great to do this through this freehand without a ruler the first time. So you get the idea of the pattern. And then you can go back and make it as nice as you want. But if you think it looks messy, then just add some color to it. So let's add some color, okay? So 
So here it is. I made my own Sierpinski's triangle pattern and I just did this freehand. I did not use a ruler for this one and I just had fun and I colored it in. This is the pattern that the Sierpinski's pyramid is based on and we're going to build out a 3D pyramid based on this pattern. And this pattern is made with fractals, shapes that repeat itself in all different sizes. All right, so I'm going to show you how to draw Sierpinski's triangle using a ruler and um, making it really precise and measuring out your measurements so it looks really nice. Um, to do this, you need a ruler, and if you don't have a ruler, you can use any straight edge, like the side of a hardbound book, or any edge you can find. Um, you also need, well, I like to use a Sharpie, but, um, you know, a pen or a marker, and a pencil with an eraser, okay? And a piece of paper. Okay, let's do it. All right, to start with, let's measure out our paper. So our paper, um, this is a standard piece of paper that you would put like in a computer printer and it's eight and a half by 11 inches. And drawing something like this is really good practice with using a ruler, sorry. It's really good practice with using a ruler and it'll take practice to get good at it. But my, um, my paper's eight and a half inches wide so I want this triangle to have equal sides and it's an equilateral triangle so each side has to be the same exact length. So I'm going to start and I'm just going to use the whole paper and I'm going to do eight inches. All right. So I went from zero to eight inches. So this line is eight inches long and now I want to find the center point of this line. So half of eight, eight divided by two is four and I'm going to put a little dot there. Okay. Just a little tick mark. And then I'm going to switch from a Sharpie to a pencil because I'm going to draw a line straight up here and here <laughs> there's different ways to do this but I'm being really careful to draw it straight up so that there is um, a right angle at each side okay and there's different ways to do that but I did a very light very light line with my pencil because I'm going to erase it later I just wanted that to know where the middle is all right, so now I'm going to switch back to my marker. Um, but you can do this all in pencil and go over it later in marker. And I'm going to take the 8 right here and put it on the edge right here. And I always have to press down. And then I'm going to put the, this tip right on that line. And now I know that this line that I'm going to draw is 8 inches. All right. So I have eight inch line, eight inch line. Now, if I did it right, this should be eight inches too. So let's see. So point to point. Pretty good, pretty good. I think that'll work. Boom. All right, now this isn't perfect, but it'll do. This is basically an equilateral triangle because each side is the same, is the same. It's eight inches eight inches and eight inches. All right, so now if you want, which you can erase this. That's why I didn't actually draw it too, um, too dark because I just wanted to use it as a point of reference. Okay, now to get the triangle in the middle, I need to find the middle of each side. So I already found the middle here. So I'm gonna do it right here and there's a couple ways you can do it. You can use a pencil and put a little tick mark there, or you can do a dot. Um, you don't want to do it too big because you just are trying to figure out where the middle is. Okay, so I'm going to do four inches. So I marked the middles on all of them, and now I'm going to connect those dots. So I'm going to line up those lines. Oops. All right, my ruler moved a little bit. So as you can see, this is, it's gonna take time and I'm gonna to have to find this, this halfway mark on all three of these and I'm gonna connect those and then the halfway here and I'm gonna keep going. And the cool thing about this pattern is it just keeps going. So, um, 
So this side right here is 4. So half of 4 is 2. This is a great, uh, the reason I like mathematical geometric drawings is because they're very, well, they're very mathematical. And um, it helps you understand math a lot better when you can draw it out. So Pinsky's triangle is a triangle based on math. So this time I used a pencil. Um, and I'm going to mark each of those, and I'm just going to do exactly what I did. This is a design based on fractals, which means we use the same shape over and over again. And this design can literally go on forever. And when we built it out in three dimensions, or in 3D, we got the Sierpinski's Pyramid. This is the Sierpinski's Triangle in 2D, and then we get the Sierpinski's Pyramid. Okay, now I have to take half of this. So this is two inches long. So I'm going to find the one inch mark and make a, a little tick mark. And you know, this takes a lot of patience. But we have, we have time right now. So if you want it to do, if you want it to look really good, just go slow, make your measurements, and um, maybe start with a pencil rather than a Sharpie because if you mess up, you can just erase it. All right. Oh, that one looks a little off. So, all the more reason to use a pencil. So, when I color that in, it'll be fine. See that? You can just go over your work if you mess up. All right, here you go. We have Sierpinski's triangle. And you can leave it like this. It looks really cool like this. Or you can color it in, which looks really neat as well. I like this because it's like making your own geometric doodle sheet. And when you, when I gave you the, the packets of work before you left school, I made a bunch of copies from these geometric designs. And... I have always liked to do doodling with uh, geometric designs. And if you don't have these designs at home, you can download them from the internet or you can make your own.